used to be that, that games companies back in years ago where you got it as a as a free sample where they would let you test it to find bugs and, and you would be bug bounty and you would go and find it and report it and say, oh, this happens at this point in the game. That's with the company's permission. It's all about permission. And if there's a part of you that thinks, I'm not sure if I should, let's do it anyway and see what happens. The fact that you've stopped yourself to ask that initial question of, I'm not quite sure if this is allowed, don't do it. So I'm here with my new hat on in my new role <laughs> in law enforcement. Uh, I'm really pleased to be joined, joined sorry, by Mark and Kenham um, from the Cyber Choices team. Um, just over to you guys, really, just if you could tell us, Kenham, a bit about your role, um, who you Absolutely. are, and equally, Mark, your role and who you are, and, and we'll, like, we'll start to explore Cyber Choices a little bit more and, and find out exactly what it's all about. Yep, so I'm a police constable working with the Nottinghamshire Police, but I work with the Cyber Department, I guess, as a Cyber Prevent and Protect Officer. It's all very wordy, but it essentially means that I work with the public to try and help them protect their accounts, um, especially after they've been a victim of any kind of cyber-based crimes. Um, but also the preventative side is more dealing with quite often younger children, but not necessarily, uh, but dealing, uh, dealing with people, I guess, in a way uh, to help prevent them from falling into the path of committing cyber crimes and giving them alternatives and, and different routes in order to how their skills, I guess, can be effective rather than used nefariously. Yeah, so say so my name's Mark with Nottinghamshire Police. So I work in the cyber unit alongside Canem. Um For me, it's very similar. It's dealing with victims. Uh, I do the side arm of businesses that may have been a victim of a, of a hack. Uh, do a lot of work within schools, young people. Um, sort of a, a two-pronged attack. Protecting people that are, that, that are online, doing it safely. Uh, but also through the Cyber Choices Program, it's about teaching people where that line is. A lot of people might not be aware that they might already be doing things that could fall foul of, which we'll go into a little bit later. So it's education, protection, essentially just banging the drum of being online, but being online safe as possible. Yeah, such an important message. We, we work with so many young people through the British Esports Student Champs, where we are today at the Grand Finals, also through our education programmes that we've discussed in the past, you know, around the BTEC programmes we work with. I think it's 164 schools and colleges at the moment on the education programs. And it's such an important message that Absolutely. you've got young people online having fun, enjoying themselves, engaging in something that they're passionate about. But in that environment, we absolutely need to know where the line is yep. and then what the possible consequences are to make sure that actually when we have got talented young people that are exploring the internet and they are online, that they're doing that safely and they're yeah. doing that. You know, such Absolutely. An we, we see quite often that, especially with gamers in a competitive environment, that that edge that people sort of need mentally to really push themselves and to go fa go fast can sometimes lead them more easily to take those sort of ethical steps that we would steer them in a different yeah. direction from again. Um, we see a lot of gamers using things like booting tools to kick people out of games, um, even, you know, getting involved in sort of DDoS attacks and stuff like that. Um, whereas, obviously, again, just because they have the talents and the skills, we try and really bring everything back together. Um, yeah, and I think as well, part of it as well is we do see, although there's not a direct correlation, a lot of the neurodiverse community are online and a lot of a lot of people we see online that are highly skilled, but they're actually really vulnerable for being taken advantage of through organised crime, criminal groups and, and gangs and things like that. So you've got people that have a lot of online ability and a lot of technical ability that may struggle socially. So again, we do a lot of work to identify risk factors and how people, we say, we say about stay safe online. Yes, that's passwords and that's account safety, but actually how somebody can protect themselves from being exploited and somebody sort of befriending them with an end goal to get the, the person to commit crimes that may not know that they're being used yeah. and abused in, in that way. It's, so. it's kind of just a new form of grooming in that yeah. sense. There are people out there that would prey on people with vulnerabilities to get them to do things that they want them to. It's the same process that yeah. we deal with a lot in other aspects of policing. Yeah. Um, and from a cyber choices mm -hmm. point of view, then just to come to you, Mark, on that, if c can you just try and frame almost top line what the program is, what its purpose is? Yeah, so it's a national program. It's a referral basis, so anybody can refer. Um, and, and essentially, the, the program is aimed at those that are highly technical, um, that are at risk. So they're either at risk through their own vulnerability, or they are at risk because it may be that through school, college, university, or even home life, their behaviour is just starting to approach the line where people are thinking, if this goes any further, 
Kana mentioned earlier about the ethics and, and the sort of morals behind it. A lot of people sort of blur that online. So people can get referred in. It goes through a process of reason for the referral. So that is looked at, at, um, at a regional level, national level, and then they're disseminated to force. So it, it goes through the National Crime Agency, the NCA. They look at everything and then they decide actually this person qualifies or this person doesn't. It's a voluntary program. So just because somebody has been referred, they can turn around and say no at any time. We then maybe change tact slightly and think, well, if it's a school setting, the person that doesn't want to be part of the program doesn't have to be. However, we might then go into a year group assembly or we might still... The, the referral part and the, the um, consensual part is only about the one-to-one. -one. So we do have people that say, their parents will say, I don't want my child having one-to-one -one with the police. We're not, we, we don't want him in the program. That's fine. We may we, still have to have a conversation. Yeah, we still would go into the school because yeah. there is still going to be risk factors. The referral yeah. has come on the back of somebody somewhere thinking this person either might need help mm. or a little bit of guidance in the right direction. And I think that that's a really key message around it's help, it's support, it's guidance. It's, it's not something to be afraid of no. law enforcement. And I can remember my earliest memory, which is a great memory in primary school, PC Moss, shout out to PC Moss, <laughs> coming in, speaking to us, teaching us road safety. Mm. And we had a really, really good relationship. Yeah. And I can remember that yeah. still now, and it's had a lasting impact. And I think that's really important. We deal with so many young people that actually there's a, there's a supportive service there. Absolutely. That's there to help, that's there to guide with the ultimate goal of making sure that we're staying safe and that we're not going down the wrong path where there will be some consequences and we, we want to prevent that don't yeah we? i mean my, my thing when i go into the schools and the universities i always say i'm, I'm quite a, an informal person I, I'll, I'll try and, and make it as engaging as possible and my thing straight away is to say i would rather have an hour with people where it's really informal and it's really engaging because the alternative is you overstep and we do this under caution or we do this then in a much more formal scary setting with an interview and, and the consequences of that so keeping it early intervention, I'd rather speak to 10 and 11 year olds than wait until they're 16, 17, because at that point, the law changes a little bit on how they're dealt with. So definitely- I, I, think, I think we're quite lucky in essence because we don't always have this opportunity in policing. Quite often it is somebody's committed a crime and that's our only opportunity for an interaction. Because this program is an opportunity to really sort of nail down what the right way is, what the right pathways are, what options we have to go forward. And it can provide opportunity. I know we've had people in the past that we've ended up pushing into sort of internships with big companies. I'm not going to name them because yeah. I don't want to um, shout them out, but really important work, you know, into really important stuff and sort of catapulted them into jobs in cyber. Yeah. And as we all know, this can be quite lucrative and, you know, uh, they're gold dust in a lot of essences. And, so. and there are a lot of jobs out there in what we've got now with lots of young people that are out there that are in education, one of the things that I always refer to is, I don't think we've ever had a time where young people in our education system have been as technologically advanced. Mm. Nice. Yes. And how, how do we harness that? How do we hone that? So that we can actually use some of those talents that people are learning these talents at home yeah. and we can craft that into careers. And that, uh, again, that's why we exist around education. What, what would your message be to any young person that's listening now in terms of, you know, them online, they might be sat listening going, that sounds a little bit like me, I am talented, I, I yeah. do know how to do some of these things. How can we hone that into a positive thing? I would say be curious, be adventurous, learn new things, do all those things that you want to do, but just understand that there are also rules that we have to follow. Yeah, there are also lines which we shouldn't cross and that we don't want to cross yeah. and that we have to be considerate of those things. So if you think you want to go into something like hacking, it's a, it's a valuable job. Ethical hacking is a really valuable job. And there's a lot of scope there to become a penetration tester or something like that that has really good upsides in terms of being a, being a, an important job in society. However, if your way of going into hacking is just hacking, then that's always not going to be the best way. That could end up getting you in trouble with the police. And it could mean that you've now got a criminal record which prevents you from ever getting work in the cyber role, yeah. just from making a mistake when you're young. So do the things that you want to do, learn the things that you want to learn, but do it in a way that is safe and that you know abides by the laws. 
it all harbors under under permissions it's as simple as that it's um if you don't have permission to do it don't do it as kanem says there are companies out there that that will give you permission to sit and spend a weekend trying to hack their system find flaw it used to be that that games companies back in years ago where you got it as a as a free sample where they would let you test it to find bugs and and you would be bug bounty and you would go and find it and report it and say oh this happens at this point in the game that's with the company's permission. It's all about permission. And if there's a part of you that thinks, I'm not sure if I should, let's do it anyway and see what happens. The fact that you've stopped yourself to ask that initial question of, I'm not quite sure if this is allowed, don't do it. Yeah. Because that is where you're going to fall foul. And if, and if you're ever unsure, then reach out. Ask the questions. Ask the yeah. people that are, you know, parents, guardians, carers. Ask the people that are around you that might have that knowledge. And if they don't know, find someone who does. And that's the important thing. You don't just go, ah, I'll risk it, because that's where we potentially fall foul of, of laws. I've worked as a teacher myself in education for years, and I'm a parent. You know, I, I've got young children that, as they get a little bit older, they're going to be online, and they're, we're going to in, introduce them to digital things. As, as a parent or as a teacher, if, if you've got a message marked to parents, teachers that have got young children or are in a position of trust or responsibility with young people, what, what do they need to do? Where can they go to get support and advice? I think initially take an interest. So much, uh, unfortunately, happens where we, we then get involved and parents, teachers or, or guardians will say, I had no idea. He just told me he was gaming in his room. And that's fine. But understand what that might, you know, listen for, we say certainly with teachers and, and uh, educators, is look for little buzzwords. If, if somebody mentions the dark web, if they mention an Onion browser or a tool, that could be the first point of you thinking, well, that's not regular everyday computing. There might be a little bit more there that we need a conversation about. You know, for parents, have a look at how much time they're spending. If, if and, and is that, is it taking them away from, normal everyday activities are they spending a disproportionate amount of time online is is it we do see it where people do suffer withdrawals if that starts to happen what why is that what is it that they're so immersed in um look out for words Kana mentioned a few uh ddosing um booter tools we're not asking people to be experts because the field moves and, and everything changes so regular but it's about if you hear something that you're not familiar with it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a crime being committed. It just might mean that you might need a further conversation. As Kanem says, um, cyber choices, that is accessible through the National Crime Agency website. You've got the National Cyber Security Centre website, so the NCSC. And then locally, we've got the East Midlands Cyber Secure website. Um, the easiest thing to do, you can access all of this advice through so many different channels. Mm -hmm. If you just sort of search cyber choices, it will have absolutely everything there. There's so many resources available on there. Yeah. Loads of things to upskill people. And to YouTube. Yeah. YouTube videos. We saw while we were just upstairs, one of the um, the NCA videos about cyber choices. They're all on YouTube. Um, so again, you don't need a computer degree to refer somebody in. The referral doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to get picked up. That referral is, is, if you like, that call to 101 to say, I don't know if this is anything we should be aware of or be, be worried about, can somebody take a closer look? We take the closer look and go, yes, we're going to have a chat, or actually that's that's just normal legal, ethical computer use. Amazing. Thank you so much. I think the, the lasting thing for me when I try and simplify it to parents that I speak to is I use the analogy of if you've got parents or young people, <clears throat> don't let them do something online that you wouldn't let them do in person. Yep. So my analogy is would you take your kids down to the local park and just leave them for six hours with a lot of people they've never met. <laughs> it's That's so true. Don't let them do the same thing online. And Make it, sure you know what they're doing. It's the same with sort of thefts. If somebody breaks into a house, takes takes a TV, then it's a crime. However, people seem to think that hacking somebody's account and taking their NFTs or their skins, well, that's not a real crime because it's online. No, that that is actually theft. That is actually still very much a crime. So, yeah, that's yeah, actually really dealt good. dealt with in that way. I think oftentimes we lose the sense of individuality. We, we see ourselves anonymous online, and that's not true, obviously, as we all yeah. know. Yeah, yeah um, it's, it's very easy to type away behind the keyboard. That's it. Would you do that in person? Would you yeah. say to that? And that's my thing. Would, if you're not going to say it to your face, same with images and videos. If you don't want your, the old thing is if you don't want your mum to see it or your grand to see it, don't, don't take it, don't do it. And it is the same online. Online now is not a, uh, a, a place for... Um, people not to be seen, I can hide behind a keyboard because 
even VPNs and things like that. There is so much out there now that unfortunately, yeah. you will unfortunately be tracked if you've done something wrong and, and we will sort of deal with you as we need to. And it is that, it is that social presence online as well through social media and accounts. And again, whenever I go into schools or education and people always say, they ask about careers advice and job advice. Mm. I say, if you apply for a job, I said, how would you feel if when you apply for a job, I type your name into Facebook or X? Yeah. What am I going to see? Yeah. And you can... Um, we, we see that a lot now. <laughs> yeah. You know, really think yeah. about <laughs> what you're putting out there. Yeah, we and, see it a lot. Before you and nothing's ever truly deleted. There was a cricketer. I, I always use the example. There was a cricketer a few years ago, got an England call up um, and somebody Googled his name, um, searched his name and they pulled back tweets that he'd from sort of 10 years previous where he was 12, 13 years old and he lost his contract and, and he had to sort of, and his argument, well, his his reasoning was, well, I was a child, I didn't know. But unfortunately, we've done a lot of work locally with a, some of the local football academies for their young players that you come on as a sub in an FA Cup match and suddenly your name is in the national press. Yeah. People are going to immediately start searching you up. What are they going to find? And if that's going to cost you a dream career, mm -hmm. Within cyber, if you've got a if you've got a skill set within computer design, within gaming, yes, that can help you. But if you've then got a criminal record for a computer misuse act offence, that kind of could work against you. That you've got all of these skills, but you also potentially have trust issues around computers. Yeah. If you don't know where the line is, we, is a company going to let you we, do we something? We find that, that cyber in general as well has a very high level of vetting. Quite often, you're dealing with quite sensitive um, information. It could be on a national level. That we're talking about um so there's normally quite level uh, quite high levels of uh i guess viewing what your integrity is yeah. and they take the whole of your identity into account then so absolutely thanks thank you so much it's really interesting really informative i could have another hour yeah <laughs> questions about this i hope that's been useful for everybody as, as we've heard please do reach out please do get in touch all the resources are there to support you once again thank you very much thanks, thanks for having us cheers cheers, cheers. <laughs> So I'm delighted to be joined here by Joss and Ruben, um, father and son duo, <laughs> being here with us at national finals. And you actually weren't a duo, you were on opposite teams, yeah, weren't like. you? Taking, taking part in the show match. Um, <laughs> tell us a bit about today. Why, why are you here? What are you here to do today? Uh, well, we came, yeah, we came last year. We, th we enjoyed the day out, so we thought we'd give it another go. It's uh, obviously free tickets, so I'm always after free stuff. There we go. <laughs> uh, and then when the show match opportunity came up, it looked like a, a good it looked like a good time, so we just went for it. Yeah. How did you find it? An email, I think. No, I mean, how did you find it on there? Oh, how on did, there, on there. Like? That was, yeah. It was actually really fun. Yeah. yeah, I actually had a really good time doing it. So last year you were watching. Just watching. This year you got on the stage. Did you have any nerves? How, how did you find it going up there? It's a little bit nerve wracking, but you just once you kind of like put the headset on, you just kind of do it, and you don't really think about it. Yeah. You just play the game. Yeah, it was just with with the team. We were just uh, going as make it up as we went along, really. Because uh, <laughs> when, when I found out I was against uh, when I was against Joss, I was like, oh great, we're not going to win this one then. <laughs> and how did it go? Uh, we we lost we lost big time. And you won. Yeah. 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 So bragging rights are with you for the journey home. Absolutely. Yeah? Brilliant. Yeah. Um, so Joss. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. You know, what, what's your relationship with video games and esports? And also, I'm really interested in what you're doing academically as well at university. Yeah. Um, so, I remember you introduced me to games very early. Mm, yeah. Um, and then I've just kind of grown up with them my whole life, and I just carried on doing it. I love it. Um, I go to uni. I study film and TV just on my first year. Um, and I just game alongside in my free time. And I just can get on with it. It's good fun. What do you think about the sort of setup there and the facilities here? You've had a little look around and mm -hmm. there's a lot of broadcast, there's a lot of production. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things actually, well, you've not been able to take in the production room as mm -hmm. well. You need to have a little look in there. Um, is this the sort of thing in terms of events that you think you might be doing in the future? I'd hope so, yeah. yeah. This is definitely up there Brilliant. for what I want to do. And yeah. I, I'm really interested then from your point of view, from a parental perspective, mm. you know, we, we we speak to lots of parents who maybe don't understand the, the esports space and, and video games and, and what what children might be doing, you know, in terms of video games. You two have obviously got a really good relationship and bond <laughs> over this. But for, I'm just intrigued from your perspective as a parent, you know, how did you introduce that in? What are the benefits? What have you seen in terms of, um, you know, your involvement with esports together? Um, yeah, I think we, yeah, Joss introduced me to, to Overwatch back 
six years ago now probably so I, ju- I just play casually every now and again but joss has always always really enjoyed it and i've seen you know joss um build up friendships online and um yeah it just just seems very very positive um the the, the esports scene as well so i i kind of signed up i looked into the the british esports thing and i get their their regular updates and that's how i found out about this this event last year and then signed up for that so it seems like there's there's lots going on in that esports space that seems very positive to me yeah Brilliant. and um just we were talking there you mentioned meeting people online and friends you've got a bit of a trip coming up yeah you tell us about that um so i'm going to visit my friend i met online my danish friend um in two three weeks mm-hmm. with some other friends oh, amazing um, uh, have you got a bit of a trip planned what, what's the what's uh, the itinerary what what are you doing we're all flying to copenhagen together and he's gonna show us around it's his uh, country. Oh, it's gonna be good fun. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's so. We, we we hear so many stories of that way. Like I said, people connect online and you make lots of great friendships yeah, going online, yeah. and, and you, you spend a lot of time together and realise you've got like-minded people, similar interests. Um, I, absolutely, I think that'll be incredible. Let us know how it goes. Yeah. I'm interested to see how it goes, and maybe do us a little blog or a vlog or get some <laughs> pictures, and, and we'll have a look at it. Um, and then finally, moving just from your perspective, just any advice really to any other parents that might be out there listening, you know, thinking. My son, daughter, child has got an, an interest to you and a passion. Um, how to approach that? Um, yeah, I think it's it's good to let the, the, let the kids um, explore. You know, different games. There's so many different games out there, different options, and the you know a lot of them have got a very positive sort of online community. And obviously, I've seen that with with Joss and his friends as well, where they've uh, they've made, made made friendships that you know, like Joss is going over to see see his friend mate in Denmark and. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's there's lots of opportunities, um, so many different different games out there. And there, there seems to be you know a good sort of positive um, atmosphere. I mean, I, I'm one of these parents who when I'm when I'm playing, I'm usually the guy making the report of someone who's who's trolling the game or something. And yeah. I think you know it, that's 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 good to do as well. You know, there's there's, there's, there's going to be some people who are messing about, but the, generally most people are there just to have a good time and. Uh, enjoy enjoy what they're doing. I think yeah. that's that's crucial. You know, a lot of advice we give to parents is about trying to understand the space. Mm-hmm. You know, find out what 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 they're doing. Do it together. Learn things. Make the space a better space. Understand like that. Meeting people online. I want to go and visit somebody. Make sure we know who those people are and bet it. And then mm-hmm. you, and then yeah, great mm-hmm. friendships can forge and you can have a great time. So thank you so much mm-hmm. both for popping in today and you know having a bit of fun with us and, and recording some content. It was great to see you up there on the stage and competing <laughs> against each other. Um, best of luck Thank at you. university. Let us know how your trip goes yeah. and let's go and have a look at that broadcast room, shall we? Yeah. All right. Thank you cool. very much. Thanks, Callum. Cheers. Cheers.